I'm here to talk about, about Kevin Barry, who, who like Shifra, I'm a relative, I'm a grand nephew uh, of Kevin. I heard of Kevin uh, overwhelmingly through Ke Kevin's eldest sister, Kitby, or Kathy Barry, or Kathy Barry Maloney, as she became. And one of the paradoxes for me is that I really only became interested in Kevin as, as an historian after, in fact, Schieffer's father, Donald, uh, produced what I think is a very good book um, in 1989, Kevin Barry and his time, because that was the first time that I saw Kevin presented as anything other than a kind of pl plaster saint, as I say in my own book, uh, with the rosary beads in one hand, an auto jammed automatic in the other, and a rope around his, th rope around his neck. Uh, and Donald uh, uh, humanized uh, Kevin, but he also made him, made him quite interesting. And as, as Schieffer has said, uh, 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 in some ways, almost a typical student uh, and that typical medical student, especially with his lighthearted approach to his studies in his early year, uh, with his uh, tendency to skive off when he felt like it, uh, with his commitment on the one hand to the volunteers, but on the other uh, to having a good time. And in particular, to be able to not just to court women in a sort of conventional rug or bugger way, and some of his letters are actually quite almost offensive nowadays in respect of, of girls, but he clearly could, could relate to women uh, directly and see them as, as people rather than as sort of uh, objects uh, of desire or whatever. So, so Donald's book I, I found very interesting. What I found also the interesting is the question of how it is that Kevin has, has in a sense, persisted so long in collective, in collective memory, and not only in Ireland, uh, but internationally. I think one of the key reasons for this is to do with imagery. It's to do with the photographs which are circulated of him, uh, but, but, but some of them before his, 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 uh, his actual execution, because they are particularly the ones of him in a hoop, in a hoop black and white uh, 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 sports shirt. It isn't necessarily a rugby shirt. And one of them, in fact, it, it, it's a detail from a wider photograph of a hurling team from 1919. But they present him as, I think, indistinguishable from thousands upon thousands of young men across Europe, but particularly for, for British opinion in Britain, who had gone off from typically from public school as young officers and gone to the war, the Great War, the First World War, and died. And I think those images are really impo important. And they're also important because they reinforce the idea of his youth. And in some ways, the, the, both the family and uh, uh, later generations face two ways in relations to Kevin's youth. Kevin was almost 19. He would not thank anybody for calling him a boy. Uh, uh, poor little Kevin Barry, as, as one uh, priest referred to him shortly after his death. He saw himself as a man. He was at the end of, of, of first med. He was almost 19. He had made his choice to join the volunteers when he was 15. Contrary to what uh, apologists thought, uh, uh, not apologists, but people even on, on, on the the government side who were British government side who were arguing for a uh, reprieve on grounds of his extreme youth. He didn't see himself as, as a helpless young fellow enthralled to older officers or anything like that. He saw himself as an autonomous actor. So where did these ideas come from? Where did his republicanism come from? I'll tell you one place it didn't come from. It clearly didn't come from UCD. It plainly uh, uh, precedes that. Both in Donald's book and in, in, in what Chief has written, what I've written, it's obvious that he, he had quite developed political ideas uh, from his early teens. And I would argue those ideas came almost certainly more from Carlo than from Dublin. Although in saying that, I'm disagreeing with my grandmother, who wrote a very powerful uh, uh, Bureau of Military History statement, claiming that Kevin was in a sense that his ideas came largely, largely from their Dublin housekeeper. I think that if that were the case, it wouldn't explain why his older brother Mick joined the, joined the volunteers in 1917. And Mick, after all, was the, was the, was the eldest son running the farm on which the family, family's well-being depended. And yet he took the decision because, to quote it, one of Kevin's sister Shell, from when they were born almost, they had heard of the iniquity of British rule and so on. So I think although Kevin's a student, he is not a typical student radical or anything like that. He's, he, he, he is radicalized, I think, at Carlo, with, with, whether it's 1798, whether it's the land war and so on, and those stories, and then, and then, uh, and then in, in secondary school. And in secondary school, he does spend a time uh, in, in O'Connell schools where he overlaps amongst others with people like uh, Ernie O'Malley and Sean Lamassey mightn't have known them. He also overlaps with Brendan Bracken, who becomes first Lord of the Admiralty in, in 1945, which shows you how a Christian Brothers education can take you, in take you in different directions. He then goes to Mary's for a year. And by the time he's in St. Mary's, I, it's clear, I think from one of his school poetry books in St. Mary's, which is now in the Linen Hall Library, I donated it there in the 1990s, 
uh, the graffiti and so on in that, it's clear that by the end, which is 1915, 16, he's writing, uh, if you like, expressing separatist sentiments all over the book, but he's also expressing his personality. He's a terrible doodler. Even when I was young, which is, you know, I'm younger than Kevin now, if you follow me, but he, he, you didn't write in your school books because you were going to sell them on or whatever. Whereas Kevin writes and doodles, he draws, he writes God straff England, which I excuse my German, God strike England and so on. So he's, he's quite early on, he's doing two things. He's showing he's not too respectful of authority and he's showing that he has very clear ideas. His school essays as well, both in Mary's and, and later on in Belvedere, reflect a really surprisingly wide a span of knowledge to do with, not simply with the sort of Irish grievances against England, but to do with problems of colonialism and, and so on. Uh, uh, and quite some of them quite well articulated, uh, issues of race, all that kind of thing. So he's, he's a very interesting schoolboy, as well as he becomes a university student. But, I but the paradox for him is it's not university that radicalizes him at all, I think. What else do I want to say about him? Well, about the window which Connor touched on, I think one of the one of the tragedies of that window is where where it is now, which is in unless, as I say in my book, you have a, some bizarre skin condition, or unless you're a, a, skin, a dermatology researcher, you're not going to get to see it because it's up uh, in an obscure part uh, of of a, of a medical research building overlooking a car park. And so it is not serving even the function it did in, in, in the terrace, where at least it was in a, a student recreation room. So perhaps UCD uh, would consider moving it to somewhere where people could actually see it. What I'll say, I don't know how much time I've left, Chair, uh, but a few, couple of points I'd like to make about Kevin. Of course, three soldiers die on the day. One of them, although it was the army didn't formally know this, it was only 15. Uh, the other two, one was a couple of months older than Kevin, uh, one was about a, a year older. It was, as many such, such things are, it was an operation which went horribly wrong, uh, but yet which was turned into, in a sense, into a kind of victory. And these are the first soldiers, albeit inadvertently, killed by the IRA in Dublin uh, in, in 1920, which itself tells us something about the episodic and the, 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 the nature uh, of, of, of the conflict. What, what particularly puzzles me about Kevin, though, uh, the more I, I read about him and the more I read particularly about my grandmother, who absolutely tried to police his memory. She had several rows with Jim O'Donovan uh, for, in, for, for in, in versions of what he wrote, the final version of which uh, Ireland's Kevin Barry really is a very po faced sort of uh, story of the martyr uh, kind of work, uh, which has turned up recently. But she, she, what also strikes me, and this is about memory and families generally, is my, 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 I knew all about my, my, my dead great uncle, Kevin Barry, from a very early age. I knew nothing about my grandfather's brother, Paddy Maloney, really until after my grandmother died, uh, when I asked him in the 1970s. Uh, so how is it that in, in the family where my mother had two dead uncles, one was constantly, constantly referenced and discussed, and the other wasn't referenced at all? And I, I think that, that, that that's not a grievance against my grandmother or such, but it tells you how in, in, in families where typically there is somebody considered the kind of holder and curator of memory, they can be extremely selective in, in, in how and what they remember and what they don't even discuss. And it, sometimes we explain a, a lack of willing, unwillingness to discuss by not, not willing to go there or the pain involved. But it's also, I think, in my, my grandmother's case, through Kevin, like her friend Mary McSweeney, she acquired a kind of a public role, which is unusual for women at, at that time for some years. And I think to some extent, uh, I don't mean that Kevin was her, her vehicle to, to a public life exactly, but to, through the tragedy of his death and, and her dominance in the family, uh, she, it did give her for a few years uh, a step up, if you like, uh, in, in, into public affairs within the Republican realm and in, in, in abroad as a spokeswoman in, in America and in Australia. Uh, but I think it's curious that she never said, and of course, don't forget, uh, my husband, uh, you know, your grandfather's uh, brother, Paddy, was killed and his father was a member of the first dawn and so on. It's very interesting what I think memory is, is highly selective within in, in families, not only about a, a, a tragedy, if you like, like Kevin's, uh, but it, it could be about uh, who got who got who got what from the, the will. It could be about your great uncle Seamus and, uh, you know, the missing money or Auntie Mary and the teapot. It doesn't have to be about politics, but memory is highly selective. And the person who claims to be the custodian of memory is the one whom you, you listen to, but you don't take as being the only, the only sort of font, font of, of any historical narrative. Thank you.